Gareth Morgan and team want to rid Stewart Island of mammal pests, a reasonable ambition. However, the intended methodology is by aerial poisoning using a deadly anticoagulant called Brodificum, a slow and cruel killer that persists in the environment, a poison that kills high numbers of native species. Stewart Island is a very special place with a wide range of fauna. This bird has a band around its leg. The Department of Conservation has banded 100 birds on the island. This is the second one we've encountered. Brodificum has been detected in kiwi chicks and kiwi eggs and is responsible for killing many kiwi. To early drop Brodificum poison across Stewart Island not only puts adult kiwi at risk, it puts the young and the next generations at risk. A Kiwi territory can extend up to 100 hectares. That equates to 2.5 tonnes of poisonous bait across this guy's home range. <laughs> Busy little guys, aren't they? It's quite late now. Beautiful forest, isn't it? Anyway, we'll see if we can follow this little guy. You've got to keep your distance with these little suckers, but if you're careful, they'll run, they'll run right past you. As they're hunting around. Stewart Island sits at the bottom of the South Island of New Zealand and a one hour ordeal will see you span the 39 kilometre trip across the infamous Fobo Strait. The island is isolated and welcoming, remote but convenient. Around 40,000 visitors patronise the local hospitality and local facilities every year. Well, I've been in here a few times. We've worked it out at over 2,500. The island has a resident population of around 400 people. Stewart Island residents have been asked to vote yes or no in the eradication program. Landowners not living on the island have not been notified. Rekiura National Park belongs to all New Zealanders and the burden of making the right decision shouldn't lay only with the residents. It has the potential to split the community. Of all the forests we have visited across New Zealand, Stewart Island has one of the most healthy populations and diverse species of birds of anywhere in the country. Look at these little suckers. I've got to tell you, this is amazing, this place. We've been climbing high, get a few of these Korimokus around, which is the bellbird. Beautiful light, they've got that greeny, khaki green colour to them. And man, there were six of them just buzzing all around here, then they move on and go somewhere else. That's a beautiful place. The special thing about Stewart Island, like other great forests for bird life, is that it isn't eerily poisoned. The chatter of kākāriki is a common and welcome sound in the forests of Stewart Island. They're known to eat cereal based baits and they've been poisoned by 1080 and Brodificum. And 1080 was even found in the carcasses of dead chicks in a nest. The detection of Brodificum residues in a range of wildlife, including native birds such as kiwi, raises serious concerns about the long-term effects of broad-scale field use of Brodificum in New Zealand. Well, we left the hut probably an hour ago this morning and she's a bit low lying, scrubby and swampy down there so we thought we'll cut off the track and come up the side where it gets into the bigger bush and uh, we've seen the odd kiwi track in the mud down there so that's a good sign but um, there's actually the odd deer through here as well but predominantly whitetail not many though, very low numbers. 
we have actually seen a fresh mark or two going up here and there's a bit of fresh droppings down here so as you can see there but we'll carry on up anyway Four thousand two hundred and fifty tons of Brodificum bait will be airily broadcast if the drop goes ahead. White-tailed deer will die in large numbers and in a cruel way, as was this recent case near Tai Happy. In this Tai Happy drop, two kilograms of poison bait per hectare was distributed across the forest. The Stewart Island drop will be at a rate of twenty-five kilograms per hectare. The Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment recently stated. Another commonly used poison is Brodificum, but Brodificum has a higher risk of bykill in 1080 because it persists in the environment for a long time and it is particularly inhumane. Mōpōk in New Zealand's only native owl. Their Maori name, Ruru, means big eyes. They not only hunt at night, but during the day, and poisoned insects, rats or birds will be quickly targeted. A Brodificum study on Moorpork on Mokoia Island at Lake Rotorua recorded a five-fold increase in the death rate over the pre-poison drop period. The deaths were attributed to secondary poisoning and equated to an 82% annual mortality, which greatly exceeded normal mortality. Sweet little guys, aren't they? The old Moorpork. Just keep your eyes open as you're wandering through the bush because they just tend to swoop in any little dark shadow that goes in front of you. This following analysis on moorpork goes for all birds, including kiwi. The long-term effects of these compounds should be investigated. Substantial brodificum residues can remain in animal tissue for more than eight months. This suggests that long-term effects may last as least as long. Moreover, if other non-target species carry sublethal doses of brodificum following an eradication operation, then moorpork could accumulate a lethal dose well after the poison drop. Feral cats have been present on Stewart Island for over 100 years. Research into the cats found that rats formed 81% of the cat's diet. When rat abundance was reduced, wild cats were more likely to leave established home ranges and die, probably through starvation. They did not apparently prey switch to birds as secondary prey. Harper went on to suggest that the removal of rats is likely to substantially reduce cat numbers, possibly to the point where they die out naturally. In 2009, Rangitoto Island, which sits just off Auckland, was eerily poisoned with Brodificum to eradicate pests. An official count of 1,078 birds were found poisoned. The Department of Conservation did declare this was a conservative estimate of the total mortality. The 2011 Bird of the Year was the Pukeko. The number of these birds recorded as poisoned on Rangitoto was 445. Rangitoto has a land area of 3,842 hectares, much of it volcanic rock. Stewart Island is 174,600 hectares of pristine forest. Based on Rangitoto Island's bird kill per hectare, it's reasonable to predict that poisoning Stewart Island will kill over 50,000 resident birds. The Rangitoto Motutapu project proved that aerial eradication is unsuccessful on larger islands. Seven of the eight targeted species were detected after the completion of the three aerial poison drops. It was trapping, shooting and the use of dog teams that enabled the eradication to be completed. The number of birds recorded as poisoned was ten times higher than the targeted species combined. Weka are endemic to New Zealand and are part of the rail family. Weka are opportunists and scavengers. They eat insects, bush fruit, rats and mice and carrion. In the paper, Secondary Risks from 1080 and Carcasses, the authors state while talking about Bradificum poisoning, 
For example, the entire western Weka population of Tawhitinui Island was exterminated by eating baits or dead or dying rats. Reinfestations of rats to pest-free islands is not uncommon. Rangitoto has already been breached, as has Frigate Island. After Olver Island was declared rat-free in 1997, over 90 rats were caught in an eight-week period, eventuating in an aerial drop last year that killed over 80% of weka and 40% of the robin and saddleback populations. Researchers at Otago University found that birds on pest-free islands were found to lose their fear of predators, so when reinfestation occurs, the birds will be at greater risk of predation. Stewart Island is far bigger and reinfestation is almost certain. In the 2011 aerial eradication of rats on Olver Island, Brodificum was also found in marine life. A land care toxicology report states that six blue cod samples were analysed, each made up of five individual fish. Of those six analyses, two out of six, or one third, contained Brodificum. Brodificum was also detected in limpets and mussels, and on the Rangitoto drop, three of 11 penguins were found with Brodificum in their carcasses. Five dead dolphins were also tested, no traces of the poison was found. However, the detection limit used to test the dolphins was 0 0.005, whereas the detection limit for the penguins was more refined and more likely to detect the poison at 0 0.001. Unfortunately, the Department of Conservation's testing methods are so sparse and unscientific, it is impossible to gain an accurate estimate of the true amount of contamination. Most of the fern birds present on Codfish Island were killed during the eradication of rats from the island in 1997. One example of secondary poisoning of insectivorous birds with Brodificum has been reported in a zoo, where avocates, rufous-throated ant pitters, Golden plovers, honey creepers, finches, thrushes, warblers and crakes died in an aviary after feeding on pavement ants and cockroaches that had eaten Brodificum baits. Many of Stewart Island's birds are insectivorous, including kiwi. Talks are underway by the Department of Conservation to eradicate Stewart Island of mammal pests. One of the poisons considered for the job is similar to the one which recently killed 70 endangered native bats in the North Island. To eradicate pests from offshore islands, a poison known as Brodificum is often used aerially. If it is known that a species has eaten cereal-based baits containing Brodificum, that information is included in this report to indicate that the species may eat cereal-based 1080 baits. These are the results of a small number of the native birds killed in poisoning operations that have been recovered and tested and have returned a positive result for Brodificum poison residues. Kiwi are highlighted. Brodificum baits look like 1080 baits, so birds and other animals do not distinguish between the type of poison contained in the baits. Most birds killed in poisoning operations are never recovered. Kiwi chicks are more liable to feed on novel food items. With a short bill, chicks are restricted to feeding on surface dwelling invertebrates. Where kiwi chicks are present, they are exposed to poison baits and contaminated food sources in all aerial operations. Now what's interesting about these birds being here is if you come with me this way a little bit just going carefully less than 20 metres away from the kiwi nest. There's a little warm brush-tailed possum. And there's plenty of possum sign around this area. We saw a grey earlier. And this guy's a black one or a darker, dark brown. Just pop over this way. And just pop your nose over that little punga thing there and look into that hole. Can 
you see there. Now he lives in there. What's more interesting is how these guys co-inhabited an area so close together. It's important to point out we're not saying do nothing. We're simply saying target the pest you're after and not the entire ecosystem. I believe it was 1999, a scientist by the name of Bellingham, he looked at 25 years of forests across all of New Zealand and found that the forest health was not in any way affected by either possum control or uh, possum presence. Uh, in fact, he found a dynamic, uh, vibrant uh, set of ecosystems that waxed and waned changed in density and composition over time with absolutely no correlation with um, possum control. Little evidence of predation by possums on vertebrates is obtained from analysis of gut contents of possums. No remains of vertebrates were found in almost 1900 possum stomachs from five studies. Dr. Roger Dungan and team found that possums can disperse nearly 20% of total seed rain and up to 75% for some species. This raises the possibility that possums may have positive benefits for ecological processes. The Ringy Toto project showed that the most effective way to eradicate pests was targeted ground control methods, not aerial poisoning. Target the species without massive poison bykill or the plan is ecocide. The Kiwi is New Zealand's national bird, and it's unusual to see them in the wild. However, on Stewart Island, you have your best chance. To vote on whether you think Stewart Island should be eerily poisoned or not, please visit tvwild.co.nz.